Hey guys, Alex here, and this is my first um, public appearance since I got out of the hospital. That was, when was that? I don't know, last January? That was quite a while ago. Anyhow, I've, I've gained back some weight. A lot of it's uh, fat weight. <laughs> um, yeah, when I got to the hospital, I've been eating a lot of bad food. This happened the last time I had surgery on my stomach. Like when I got to the hospital three years ago, I was having this craving for really bad food. And um, you guys know I typically eat really healthy, exercise a lot, but yeah, not this time. When I got out of the hospital, I started craving a lot of um, like fast food stuff that I typically just resent. Like I consider mall food to be like like peasant food, very uh, cheap, not very good for you either. But I'm gonna go to the mall. I'm gonna pick up some peasant food. I'm gonna go for a euro actually, which is it's like. I guess Greece's um, version of a fast food hamburger. That, that's their fast food response to that. Anyways, I am going to go out to Oviedo. They have a place called the Mediterranean Gourmet. Pick up a Euro, uh, maybe do some shopping. Anyhow, before I go, I want to talk about this. The Game of Thrones. You guys ever watch this? It's amazing. One of my favorite TV shows of all time. Which is pretty amazing because I'm really not into fantasy. And this has a fantasy uh, setting, sorry. Um, anyways, let's go to the mall. And I'm going to bring my companion, Ong. There he is. You see him? He's right there. He's right. Right there. So let's go, my friends. Ong, shall we? Yip, yip. Yip, yip, indeed. Hello my friends, so I am traveling to Oviedo with my traveling companion, Ang, and um, I had to open the window earlier because he was uh, doing some airbending in here, it smelled kind of bad. Anyways, I'm going to get a Euro, and um, I also want to just spend money because I haven't spent money in, in months, aside from my online transactions. Um, Alright guys, so I made it here. To a veto and yeah let me show you what it looks like you can't really see it it's it's too far and I think the glare is or the uh, what do you call it the exposure of the film is is washing out the colors in the back but anyways it is there and um, I can't bring this guy down because people can't know I play with dolls so it's a good thing there are parking things here parking de designations because I'd be lost. So just remember guys, I'm in 1A. And, oh yeah, you can see the mall back there. Uh, there's a, a movie theater in here. Um, probably the Vito Mall. Since there aren't many uh, good stores here. Like there used to be an FYE, but they closed it. And the only FYE in Orlando is in the Millennium Mall. All they have at Vito Mall now are, um, well they have a lot of stores, but stores that I don't go to. Um, but they have the movie theater, which which I still go to, and the food court, which since I'm not really caring too much about my diet anymore, I will be eating at the food court more often. Here we go. Here's a better look at the Oviedo Mall. My my camera shaking. Got my food. French fries are pretty good actually. But this is my Euro. It's got that lovely tzatziki sauce on it. Haven't tried it yet. But I'm in the food court, see it behind me? There's a little uh, playground thing. Um, there's some guy carrying boxes. But yeah, behind me you can see the upstairs of the, the movie theater as well. And there, that's where I came from. That's why, I, that's why I was parking my car earlier. Right out there. Uh, by the way, the fries are actually pretty good. See, it's got some seasoning on it. It doesn't taste too, too greasy, but it is still fried, so whatever. Here's my awesome, yummy looking gyro. Like all the meat came off a little spit, and there's the awesome tzatziki sauce, some tomatoes and lettuce. Bread looks pretty nice, it's very warm. I'm gonna try it now. All right, let's bite into this bad boy. Awesome. 
The bread's good. And the meat tastes really good too. I love the, the Euro meat. It's got that little zingy zest to it. Not spicy, but it's got a little tangy flavor to it. I love it. I did see this really funny SNL skit many years ago, probably the 90s. It's about this Greek restaurant um, ran by, by Greek immigrants. And um, every time customers came up to ask for more tzatziki sauce, the, uh, the Greek um, owners would be like, Ah, you like the sauce, huh? Hey, the customer, he wants more sauce. Like, ah, he likes the sauce, eh? Anyways, eventually you find out that um, the Greeks, they get their tzatziki sauce by climbing Mount Olympus. They ask Zeus to fill up their bucket of tzatziki sauce. Um, I know that doesn't sound funny, but when you watch the skit, it's pretty funny. And especially if you like Euros, it's, it's pretty funny. Yeah, I always have a hard time eating into this last part of a Euro. Because you're... Because the foil won't go down farther. So, you're left with a choice. Where well, you're left with the only option of taking this, the Euro out of the foil. Then it gets really messy. See that big backup of tzatziki sauce? Yeah, once I try to eat it from the other side, all that tzatziki sauce is gonna run right down. It's gonna be really messy, guys, but, but glorious nonetheless. Anyways, I guess it's the last part of my sandwich without making a mess. I'm gonna dip it in the extra sauce here. Eh, he likes the sauce. That was quite yummy, my friends. I'm gonna walk around and look for stuff to buy. Well, it looks like the only quiet place to record here is in the, the history section, of course. And there are some pretty good books here. I have them all, of course. Here's a pretty good modern bio about Alexander the Great. It's by uh, Philip Freeman. Very simplistic. It's not the best modern bio, though. I'd say the best, the best modern bio on Alexander the Great is Peter Green's Alexander of Macedon. Very good book. My favorite book about Alexander the Great is The Campaigns of Alexander by Arian. One of our most reliable sources on Alexander's military campaigns from antiquity. The Conquest of Gaul by Julius Caesar. It's my favorite book about Julius Caesar, and it's written by Julius Caesar. If you read the uh, Julius Caesar's campaigns on the Roman Civil War, it's pretty good, but not as good. A huge chunk of that book about the Roman Civil War wasn't written by Caesar, and I just noticed this book just sitting here. Mein Kampf, uh, that's a really good book, very uplifting. Oh, it's recording. Yeah, so I didn't really buy anything from the mall, except for the Euro, and um, I did get this. I got a little um, birthday card from my friend. Um, but yeah, there wasn't much to do. Like, there were a lot of employees. I think there were a lot more employees walking around the mall than there were, like, uh, you know, people like me just trying to shop, people not working at the moment. Um, there was this one new place there called Paul Mitchell's school of cutting, haircutting or something, and they were just offering free haircuts. And this girl offered to give me a haircut. But I was like, I don't have any hair to cut. She make me a skinhead? Anyhow, um, yeah, there wasn't much to show in the mall. A lot of uh, closed stores. Like, closed stores, like, stores that weren't operating anymore. Um, as opposed to closed clothing stores that sell clothes but yeah uh, I'm gonna go somewhere else and maybe I can film something else I don't know I wasn't really planning on filming anything today I just wanted to get a euro to be honest I'm at a stoplight right now I just want to show you this this tragedy here you guys see that Jared's well I've never been to Jared's but look next to Jared's 
that building way back there where the FedEx truck is passing, there used to be a, a, a Borders bookstore there. And they closed it. So, there's really no reason for me to go all the way to Oviedo now. Except for Euros. But you can get Euros anywhere. At any, at any Greek restaurant. Or any shopping mall. So, I've... I've come to a decision. I'm gonna go to Big Lots. You guys ever been there before? It's this really ghetto um, store that sells a lot of things on discount. Um, but yeah, I found the battle for Middle Earth 2 there many years ago. I got it for like seven bucks. So let's see what kind of treasures I can find from Big Lots today. All right guys, I made a slight detour here. I saw this place called Oriental Market. It's got Japanese, Filipino, Chinese, and Vietnamese items here. The reason why I want to go here is because I'm looking for some uh, some different brands of ramen noodles. Like if you ever go to like Publix or Winn Dixie, all they have is like Top Ramen and Maruchan. I want to look for something else. I'm tired of those brands. I feel like I'm back home, back home in Asia. Still looking. <laughs> so I found some brands. I'll get this one. Nissan. It's beef flavor. And I love this one. It's, it's that Korean noodle. Shin ramen. Really, really spicy. I can get this. Success, guys. My trip to the Oriental Market was very successful. I got a whole bag of, of noodles here. Let's see, I got three packs of this. I've never tried this one, but it, it's Nissan though. I've, I've tried that brand before. Um, as I said, it's uh, beef flavor. Should be good. And I, I did find the, the Korean noodles. The Shin Ramen. Very spicy. And uh, the girl inside was telling me to be careful, it's really spicy. But I know that. I've had it before. Now, I've never had this one before. It's... Mojo. Japanese-style noodles. And this one's actually refrigerated. So, you gotta keep it refrigerated. And that means the noodles are gonna be awesome. See that? Alright guys, I have found Big Lots. And yeah, that's that's it. I'm going in, guys. Going in the big lots. I got Chuck Norris back here. Oh, let me show you his view. Let me show you Chuck Norris. That's him. Look. That's Chuck Norris back there. He fights karate style. I found two. Warcraft. And football mogul. All right, um, I want to apologize for cutting that big lot scene so abruptly, but I had to get out of there because Chuck Norris was threatening to uh, use karate moves on me. So I ran out of there. I did not get World of Warcraft, and I did not get that football mogul game. Hello. Let me see. Lionheart? Hello. Hey, how's it going? Yeah, it's good. You all right? Yeah, and um, Lucy's here too. She plays other video games. Oh, cool. Hi. <laughs> Hello. All right, so um, all three of us watch Game of Thrones, yes? Yep. Yep. I also read the books and do a lot of other stuff. Yeah. Yep. Nice. <laughs> all right, well, let's not talk about the book so we can avoid spoilers for season three. Um, let's start off. What do you guys think of the second season? Was it better or worse than the first season? Um, I will let Lucy start. Yep. Lucy uh, uh, <laughs> um, I would say, I don't know, with me, 
it's 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 hard to say. I like the f I, I like both seasons the same because I'm I'm a fan of I'm, I'm pretty much a fan of the kind of the introductory period of most shows more than the kind of meat of the show. It's weird. I gotcha. So I like I like the whole setup of the first season because you're introduced to everybody and you're getting used to them. Um, but the second season did kind of um well what's the word for it matured kind of. Uh, because uh -huh. in the first season, there's a lot more kind of skin shown and a lot more. Mm. They, they're trying to get people to watch it. Um, they got me hooked. The second, yeah, and, and in the second season, they kind of figured out they didn't need that. So they dialed it back and they tried and they focused more on the story and the action. They obviously had a much larger budget um, through uh, the second half of the second season. Oh, yeah, it was pretty yeah, epic. Especially the, Especially with Blackwater Bay, which you can tell that's where most of the budget went to in that CGI scene. That was a very oh, awesome right. episode. <laughs> the big big naval battle. Yeah, exactly. Um, there, the, the other, but if you, I know we're not talking about the books, but just in, in dealing with uh, somebody who has read the books, the second season also took more liberties in uh -huh. comparison with with the book, like, scenes were changed, kind of out of place in some areas, like told before and after, you know, where they were supposed to be, or split apart. Some characters were much less developed, like, uh, uh, example, the the maester who poisoned himself in the early, in the first episode of the second season. Okay. Um, in the book, he had, I think, two chapters where he was the main, he was the, the point of view character. Oh, really? I so didn't you, know that. So, so you got a lot more set up for it. Um, so I think I think the second season was more of its own thing, while the first season stuck really close to the uh, to the book. Nice. Uh, so, uh, what about you, Linehart? Did you read the books? Uh, no, I haven't. It's kind of one of those series that's it's on a long list of books I really should read and just don't have time to <laughs> right now. Um, so what do you think? Second season better or first season? Well, I mean, I'm probably am a, I'm a bit biased in, in terms of some of the characters. I mean, I absolutely love Sean Bean. Um, Me too. <laughs> a huge, huge fan of the, the Sharp series. So I mean, sort of seeing him there as a uh... oh, spoiler alert! Oh, right, good. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> seeing him um, as a Lord of Winterfell, Ned Stark. That w that was awesome. I, but I, I, yeah, I did like the introduction to all the characters in season one. But I think yeah, season two it kind of. It dialed up the epic factor, and especially as you said, like the the battle at the at the end, where it culminates with the the naval battle and then the the, the siege of King's Landing. Mm -hmm. Just absolutely awesome. And, and I think it's right at the end. Um, God, I can't remember the character's name. Um, What's right, it look it's, like? It's, it's, it's the God, it's the like the Lannister grandfather. Oh, the uh, uh, the right hand about... or the right arm oh. of the king. Are you talking about the? Uh, are you, oh, are you talking about the um, the uh, the head of the House Lannister? Yeah, head of the head of House Lannister. What's oh, he's name? he's uh he's um. Yeah. It's, 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 it's the imp. No, it's it's uh Tywin. It's their. Tywin, that's it. Lord Tywin, when he comes in and just there's that epic music playing, and he just goes, "We have won," and I was just like, "Yes, you have." Yes, and you for that have. moment, I was, I was entirely happy to be Lannister. Uh, <laughs> you, you know, I was kind of upset by that because I was hoping um, Tyrion would have got the glory. Yeah, he's been he's been knocked out with a huge cut across his face. Yeah, I mean, I'm in that battle. It was it was pretty much him who, who killed the most people when he when he launched that that fire, and destroyed most of that that fleet. Like right there. He also rallied the troops at the end and uh, and led the yeah. uh, the flanking assault. Um, yeah, I, I think I think it's moments like that where you have that build up, and as well, season two is kind of this this whole build up to you know the the idea of like the White Walkers are, are reappearing, and that there's some great big threat both in the north and in the south at King's Landing, and it both culminates with those sort of uh, events. I think for me, season two, yeah. I mean, not that season one was bad. I mean, season one was awesome, amazing. But definitely. season two definitely, you know, it stepped up its game. It brought home what the second season should do. You know, first season gets the viewers. Second season keeps them and goes, this is why you should be, you know, absolutely crazy and mentally excited for season three, which I am. <laughs> um, let's see. Okay. Um, favorite characters. Uh, name 
one favorite character and why? Starting with Lucy. Oh, I was not prepared for this. Um, <laughs> Surprise! Uh, specific season favorites? Um, season two, Um, between one and two. Uh, who would you say your favorite? Oh, God. It's, uh, it's a toss-up. It's a toss-up between, between Ned Stark, um, and his, and his son. Rob? Is it Rob? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's Rob. Um, and I don't know, I just, like, one, I, I really like Sean Bean. Uh-huh. Um, <laughs> He's a cool guy. Very charismatic. Like, he has the same character, basically, and all, and, and you know, pretty much, they're, they're gonna die. I mean. Yes. You know, you know, because he doesn't like having... Because I think that the reason he wants, he always does that is because he doesn't want to be typecast, so his characters always have to die. Yeah. So typecast, <laughs> even though he's kind of typecast now as the dead guy, but whatever. He's a monopoly um, on that. Yeah, and I like I like Rob a lot because I like the kind of. Like kind of, I don't know if it's makeup or if it's him naturally aging, uh, but kind of going from the season one, he does look really young, um, and in the books, yeah, I think he's like 14 or 15. Oh, I didn't um, know that. Yeah, actually, most characters are much younger in the uh, in the books than they are in the in the show. Uh, but I'm glad like they the made him older. <laughs> yeah, but I like the curve that he has because you can see him kind of getting older and like you know, second season he starts growing facial hair and he's getting more haggard and more kind of hardened and it, it's it's very again it's another visually telling of a character's. Oh yeah, he even puts his uh, mom in custody. Yeah, that was that was kind of awesome. Yeah, very um. Um. Very good with that. Yeah. All right, Lionheart. Who would you say? Favorite character? Oh, God, it's, it's tough. I think if we're going to choose one, it's, it's got to be um, Eddard Stark in season one. Just because it's Sean Bean and he's that, badass. He is badass. Um, I think, actually, it's probably going to be quite surprising. I think I quite like the character development that you kind of see more and more of of, um, of Lord Tywin. <laughs> it's going to be controversial. <laughs> actually, uh, I can agree with that. I I don't, like, there's there's something where I think it's when he's when he has um, Arya Stark as his kind of um, serving girl, and there's always something there which I don't know if maybe it goes into more depth in the book, but there's always something there where he he kind of knows. I kind of get the sense that he knows who she is, and beyond the fact that she sort of admits that she's from the north anyway, but he just kind of has this 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 kind of cool sense about him, sort of this presence all the time. Uh, and just also, also that that end scene where he just sort of storms in and he just goes, we have won. Just, yeah, I think he's, he's awesome. He's a lot, I mean, compared to like, what, is it uh, the other Lannister guy who's in jail? Um, oh, you mean uh, uh, Jamie Lannister? Yeah, Jamie Lannister. Yeah, he's uh, the, the, the father guy. He's a lot more sympathetic. Well, I think the whole thing we're trying to do with... Um... It's kind of because they do it in the book. Um, is uh, is Tywin isn't really evil, especially well. Actually, nobody in Game of Thrones is really evil except for like maybe Melisandre or, or you know somebody, or maybe the White Walkers or you know the, the Red Priest. But uh huh. But like uh, Ty, like he has legitimate reasons for doing everything he's doing. Like you know he. He, like, he's trying to build a legacy before he dies, which is a very human thing that they will, that somebody would want to do. There's, you know, he's trying to protect his kids and later on, and it's, he, he all has this kind of sympathetic kind of face to him because he's really doing, you know, from, from their point of view, they're doing the thing that they should be doing. I gotcha. You know, and same thing, I think Jamie's also building up that as well, from kind of a sympathetic side, even though I did kill... Yeah, I heard about that. Yeah, I heard that they're going to make him a little bit more uh, gray. Like, you don't know if he's good or bad anymore. Um, that's kind of a spoiler, too. But right now, I don't see him getting good anytime soon. <laughs> he becomes... I wouldn't say he's a... I wouldn't say he becomes something like a Rob, but he would be He would be a... Um, he, becomes one very, he does become kind of like this gray area character, which can't really pin down. Yeah. 
Wait, sad boy. Again. This is me listening to Dabar and... <laughs> now you live for work. Thomas basically. William? Yep. Hardly anything but work. No. We're doing some, uh... This is good. Some voice acting for I mean, Dubs. Yeah, you're getting paid pretty decent. Latest projects. It's, it's I'm not sure if this is a private conversation or... I'm just lazy. Should I jump in? <laughs> I think I'll jump in. Even on the weekend, like Saturday, oh my god. Hold on. I felt like I hadn't sleep all, slept all week, but I was getting eight hours sleep. Except for one night, I had two hours sleep. Whoa. Oh, that was a shit day. I imagine it. I don't know why, I couldn't fall asleep. I was just lying in bed and...